Welcome back, I'm Tedward, and this is the 2021 BMW 540i with the M Sport package. It has quite a few packages actually, and as it's optioned, it's $77,000, which is maybe a little more than you wanna spend on a non-M product. However, there's a lot of value in this car, the least of which is not in the miscolored calipers. I think red was the wrong choice on Alpine white, but I suppose if they work well, it's fine. But you know, back in the E39 days, the 540i M Sport was the poor man's M5 and it certainly handled well and you could make them handle well and they lasted for a very long time. We still see kids out there tuning them and straight piping them today, they sound great. Today, if you want the quote unquote poor man's M5, you gotta pony up a lot of cash for the M550i. I think the M550i is now the old generation's 540i. Does that make sense? And although this car is still fun to drive, it's a little more of a sensory deprivation chamber. And I don't mean that in a negative way. It's not numb. It's just that it's clearly designed to relax the driver and take them out of the stressful world around them. So let's start it up. We've got a B58 straight six turbo. And it's very quiet. And it does its job. I'm instantly relaxed when I sit in this car. The Mocha Napa leather. Ooh, how do you go back to black after you get this? This is great. And the ambient lighting at night, you can change the colors. We've seen this in the X5 and all the other cars in the past, but still it's nice to have. Under the hood, the typical double pull, which I kind of like because then you don't have to go fish around for some dirty handle under here. Not much to see here, although this purple shield on the wiring harness back there is kind of fun. I don't know why. I've just never seen that on these before, and I thought that was kind of cute. But as you'd expect, you can't see much. You've got this big plastic and foam cover, which is going to help reduce injector noise, because as we know, BMWs love to tick. But the car looks good. It hasn't gone to the bucktooth grills yet, so it's still very stylish and enjoyable. I don't know what this guy wants. And of course, we've got the LCI now, so when it's on, we have our beautiful daytime running lights with the blacked out rears. Looks pretty classy. This one has the park assistant, and what's interesting too is that you can do the backup assistant, and it remembers what you did for the last 164 feet it's telling me right now. So I can just start getting on the throttle, and it's going to back up exactly how I pulled in. So I'm not touching anything and I can watch it all unfold behind me, which is nice because if you did pull into a space that was very complicated or tight, oh, it wants me to go slower. And let's say for example, it got dark and now you can't really see very well and maybe you're uncomfortable with the corners of the car because you are sitting very low in the vehicle and it might be difficult to judge exactly where that corner is. You don't want to curb a wheel or back into somebody's mailbox. Well, you can do this for 164 feet or however long it remembered it for. All right, but, oh, this heated steering wheel is nice today. If we pop this over to the left, it puts us in sport mode. It's gonna change the tuning of this eight speed. I never really feel any obligation to put this in manual mode. It, it's just not that kind of car. It doesn't, it doesn't inspire me to do that, which is interesting because it can do things. It is very capable in a corner. It is very capable as a performance vehicle. It's just that it, it seems to hold its own promise of relaxing the driver first before just egging you on to be a psychopath. Plenty of torque to get us away from the slow drivers, although certainly not overpowered. Is this, this power isn't gonna blow you away. I think the M550i is the car for you if you need something that's just more than you're used to or more than you need in a car, because this isn't, this is, this is adequate. This is right where it should be. There's no one behind us, so I can show off these brakes a little bit from 70. Super balanced, it's doing its best to keep everything in line. It's a little cold out too, so I'm impressed. In normal mode, it's giving us a power meter instead of a tachometer on the right. But if we go into sport mode, now we've got our tack in red, we can floor it. 
and we can feel out all 335 horsepower from this ultra smooth B58. I really like the B58. If there's gonna be an engine that's somewhat ubiquitous across all of the BMW lineup, I'm glad it's this. This is a, this is a lovely engine and it takes a lot of different forms. This isn't the exact same configuration that you would find in say the Toyota Supra or the Z4. This has X drive. So we're not worried about losing traction on that rear end. You can get on throttle from a dig in pretty much all conditions and you are gonna have traction. This one is fitted with the Pilot Sport 4 ZP. ZP is zero pressure, which means it's got run flats. And yes, the sidewalls are relatively stiff. And that's probably the only thing transferring unpleasant energy through this cabin. We do have an adaptive suspension, which is lovely. It soaks up the bumps. And as even in sport mode right now, we can go through this. And in the, the chassis is rigid, but I'm really not getting anything conducted into me that's uh, unpleasant. Torque is available nice and low, and then it just revs really nicely up to redline. It's not the most inspiring sound though, which is interesting because usually the B58 and all the cars that are driven, I'm like so into, I'm so like ready to rev it out again. This car tends to just block you from that noise, which I guess if its purpose first is to be a luxury car, then I understand. But you know, BMW still calls themselves the ultimate driving machine. And in some instances, they certainly live up to that promise. In others, I can understand why their reputation is getting really muddled right now. A lot of people think BMW's lost. A lot of people think BMW has lost their way and they're just not, not what they used to be. And nostalgia is a powerful tool, especially if all you ever owned, and I usually don't do these talking sections over the rough road because it just sounds so terrible, but this car is pretty well insulated. You can do that. But if all you've ever owned are M cars, you've owned M3s or M5s, then when you get into like a normal BMW or a BMW with an M package, right? Of course it's gonna disappoint you a bit. It's not going to give you the fizz like those vehicles did. Their M products still give me the fizz. When I drive like an M3 or an M5 or an M6, I'm still very excited to drive those cars. They're not the same as they used to be, but nothing is. And we'll just never have that raw feeling of driving a tin can with a, a loud straight six. It's gone. You know, we gotta, we gotta get past that. But that doesn't mean that the brand is dead because they still have phenomenal brakes. They still have exciting cars that are fun to drive. This car, however, I, I must admit, this is not something an enthusiast would buy. If you had a bunch of race cars and you wanted like a limousine that was still going to be an entertaining driver, then yeah, I, I, I can see where you might put this money into this car. But if this is like your only car and you're looking for the, the do-all, like I want it to be my fun Canyon Carver, I want it to get me to work, I want to be able to put the kids or some uh, colleagues in the vehicle, well, it's gonna do the kids, the colleagues, but not necessarily Canyon Carving. I, I, I think it lacks a bit of the feeling of an enthusiast vehicle. This does sedate me in just the right way, but it doesn't blind me to the fact that I still exist in the world, which is really important. When you go too far with comfort, it's nauseating. If something is too smooth, it suddenly becomes undesirable. You realize, oh, I, I didn't want that level of comfort. I just wanted to not feel my teeth chattering over the bumps. But I must admit, I do respect how surreptitious it is. I can kind of get around without causing a big fuss in this vehicle. And I think that's what most people in this price range for this type of vehicle are looking for. They're not looking for something shouty and, and wild. They just want to be able to blast around, enjoy the drive, and get the heck out of there without anyone like storming out of their house going, you maniac kids! So definitely don't get in this expecting it to feel like an M5. I mean, the limits are still high and it masks speed, but the tactility and the way it puts down power, the way it delivers feedback to the driver is not like the M550i or the M5. It's soft-spoken and sure-footed. Not 
not a whole lot of communication through the front wheels from the steering, but it's enough that you're not gonna you're not gonna totally lose it. But I, I I would advise that you get to know this vehicle a little bit before you go and chuck it into a corner because what it does better than most cars I've driven is mask speed. It's easy to put this into a situation where you're like, oh yikes, I need to bleed off a little more speed before I go and attempt this turn in. Now that we're in its natural habitat on the highway, let's take a look at some of this other technology. It does have some pretty impressive tech here because what it'll do is it will drive itself, sort of. It's an assisted cruise control. So while yes, it's got the, uh, the radar guided cruise control that can hold my speed a certain distance away from traffic in front of me, it can also hold its lane. Isn't that nice? So it will drive itself essentially in the lane. Now, it's going to bark at me if I keep my hands off of it for uh, any extended period of time. But for the most part, you can just keep one hand on it and, and let it do its thing. It sorts out the road. My worry about this kind of technology, though, is that it enables people to drive inebriated. It would enable someone to appear sober on a roadway where they would otherwise be obviously drunk. So that's there's two sides to that coin, right? On the one hand, you're like, well, isn't that great? this drunk driver may avoid the accident because of this technology. Or, on the other hand, this drunk driver won't get caught because this technology masked his insobriety. Insobriety, is that a word? So no, I, I don't think this is an enthusiast BMW, but I do think this is a BMW that I am glad exists in their product lineup because look, we're not all going to the racetrack. We're not all carving Canyon roads and the brand needs to make money to make those good cars, right? They need to, they need to sell cars. This isn't sterile, this isn't boring, however, it is muted, it is luxurious, and it is comfortable. And I don't envision somebody who's gonna go out and rip up mountain roads to buy this, but what I do envision is somebody who enjoys driving, who also enjoys luxury, comfort, and a little bit of a status symbol. And if you do have one of those stressful kind of jobs, walking out into the parking lot and getting into this is going to put a nice cap on your day because you're gonna enjoy the drive home. It's going to subdue you a little bit. It's gonna relieve some of that stress. And I'd imagine a lot of people who buy this vehicle are gonna get in it, give a quick scream to release the stress of their day, and then carry on home to their wife and kids or husband and kids and look forward to driving it again in the morning. So thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't forget to respect the drive. And I'll see you in the next one.